All right, guys, don't mind this. My son likes to grab faces and claw with his nails. <laughs> so that's what that is. Don't let the enemy have you focus on that and distract you from the message. Today, we're going to talk about spiritual abilities, powers, if you will, and the fact that witchcraft abilities, witchcraft powers are not from God. They are from the devil deceiving you to thinking that they're from God. So, example would be fortune tellers. Fortune tellers are not from God. They don't talk to God's angels. They don't speak and have communication with the dead. They're not from God. They're talking to demons. That's a big difference. And they're deceiving you out of the money that you have in your wallet, in your purse, because of your desperation through emotions of wanting to hear from a dead one a lost one, whatever, that you want to reconcile with. And they're using and taking advantage of you. And many of them are purposely deceiving you, and many of them are deceiving themselves, thinking that they have this God ability, the chosen of God, to be able to communicate with the dead. If you know the Bible, the Bible says you cannot communicate with the dead, and you should not communicate with the dead. It says that the dead is gone, there is no more memory of the dead. So they can't come back and talk to you. That will happen if you both end up in heaven. If you both gave your life to Jesus Christ spiritually on the cross, believed in the death, burial, and resurrection, then you will see your dead one in heaven because they have eternal life. That is the only way. Can't get no Ouija board, which is also witchcraft. Can't do no tarot card readings, which is also witchcraft. These are all forms of witchcraft, and it's to mislead and deceive. Um, other things that I've noticed online at false churches is the pastor who is not of God but claims to be of God will come and put his hand on you or just to the whole audience will just do something and say you all now have the gift of speaking in tongues. And that's not how the gift of speaking in tongues is given. The gift of speaking in tongues is from the Lord himself. It's edification of your salvation. It's a Holy Spirit gift. So we'll get into the gifts of the Holy Spirit in a minute through God's word, which is our final authority in life. We don't go by what our pastor says, what uh, our neighbor says, what um, this witch who claims to be a chosen of God, a good witch, has to say. We go off of what God's word has to say. And if God's word is in contradiction to what these people are telling you, they're not coming from God. Same thing with me. If I'm in contradiction with anything that God's word says, that means there's error in me. I'm not coming from God. So we always go to God's word for the final authority, the truth in our life. Now, you have to think of it as like this. Um, I think there's how many gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let me see for a second. All right, there's nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. So that's like someone claiming they can give you a gift directly from themselves. Even if they say, I'm a chosen of the Lord. If you're a chosen of the Lord, then you know that you can't give me a gift from the Lord. That the gifts of the Holy Spirit come from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit resides in you when you become adopted as God's child and become born again spiritually. So you already have whatever gifts God wants to bless you with, use you for in his office, in his work for his kingdom. It's already instilled within you. No one can add an additional gift. That's like you buying a toy at a store and it comes with six different functions to the toy. Maybe it lights up, then it moves, then it sings, then it uh, barks, whatever. You know, there's like six different functions. Just think of six different functions. And then someone comes and says, a random stranger, hey, I can add a function to your toy. I can give you an extra power, ability for that toy. No, you can't. It has six different functions. I think I said six. It already has all the functions that come with the toy. That's why they're with the toy, because they came 
with the toy. No one can add a function to that toy. So these people that are claiming that they can give you a special ability or a special power or a calling on your life from the Lord and they can bring you through their little boot camp and teach you how to use this special power. Chakra, which is not of God. Do not even look into that. It's demonic beyond what you could imagine. I can only assume that's why uh, uh, Indians have the red dot. I don't know for a fact, but it's in the same placement. So if, if you're Indian and you have that red dot, comment below of why you do that. I have no knowledge of that, but I know that the chakra is right there. So, um, they're claiming that the chakra, you know, you become like your own God and you can tap into this and manifest this and that. And that's all new age religion, garbage, witchcraft from the very pit of hell that will lead you to the pit of hell. If you continue on that path of becoming your own God. We are servants of Jesus Christ, not leaders of Jesus Christ. Don't get it twisted. He doesn't follow us. We follow him. Servants are not greater than the Lord. So what the Lord allows comes from the Lord. No one can come and give you more when you're following the Lord. You're not following man. So what God allows is in his word and is now a part of your life if you are born again as a child of his. He's not going to bless a devil, a child of the devil, with Holy Spirit gifts. It's not going to happen. So, you must be born again. Let's go into the Bible and figure out what these gifts are. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Therefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Of course they're not going to call Jesus accursed, because it's the Holy Spirit of God, the relationship with Jesus. So... It's not going to be Antichrist, but these pastors that claim they come in Jesus' name and they claim that they've blessed you with this gift and now you can speak in tongues and now you're speaking demonic tongues. There's also demonic tongues and that's what they're giving you. And you're thinking that you're chosen of God now. They're claiming that they can baptize you, but if they don't know the Lord, they're not baptizing you in Jesus' name. So they're doing a false baptism, which is actually a satanic ritual. And there's so many things that these pastors, priests, whatever, of the Catholic Church are teaching you, of other religions are teaching you, and misleading you to believe. So this way you think you're on the right path. But the path has always been this way. Well, let's say right, but on camera it's showing left. The path has always been this way, but they're leading you to the left. And you're believing that this is the way. You're even looking at the right. You're like, that, 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 that way looks better. It looks more promising this this left lane lane uh this left path looks kind of dangerous and kind of makes me nervous and uneasy but they're like oh no no don't worry don't worry we got you we come in jesus name i'm a pastor of a church uh, i'm a priest of this church uh, i've chosen of the lord oh my my school my boot camp whatever has been successful in creating little chosen ones of God. You ever notice, like, you look online, there's this chosen one category. Like, it's a common thing that people are making videos now. How do you know you're a chosen one? How, how do you know God chose you? Have this chosen that, chosen this, chosen that. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. Whether you're a chosen one or not, it's not about you. If you're a chosen one, people will see you're chosen by how you speak that you stay in scripture, that what you say comes to pass. Prophetic, it happens. That what you speak of is out of love and out of, you know, uh, support and caring and for others, just like Jesus was. There's no pride. There's no arrogance. There, there's no um, special privilege. There's no using the Lord's name to profit. 
you don't see any of that. So you don't have to say you're a chosen one. People will see it and their spirit will bear witness with yours and God will reveal it to them. Just like God revealed to uh, Peter about Jesus being the Messiah. Jesus said, man did not reveal this to you, but God my Father did. So, maybe not God my Father, I don't remember what he said word for word, but you get the idea. So, let's go back to the gifts. Oh yeah, so that movement and that trending thing of chosen one is to get people in the mindset of, instead of thinking of how do I serve Jesus better? How do I follow Jesus? How do I do what Jesus wants? How do I humble myself so I can be a servant of the Lord uh, obediently? How do I please the Lord? How do I sacrifice for the Lord? Instead, they're putting the mindset of how do I be a chosen one? How do I become special? How do I be looked upon by everybody in a, in a, a way of praise? How do I... Um, um, be basically a celebrity for God. And that's what people are going off of. And this mindset is becoming like your own God. This mindset is Adam and Eve all over again, what the serpent said to them in, in the garden. You know, God knows you will become like God's knowing good and evil. That's what they're trying to push with these boot camps and stuff that, oh, if, if, if you have a calling, I can bring it out of you and I can show you your calling that the Lord has for you. No, if you have a calling, God will reveal that calling to you. You don't need a third person to reveal that calling to you. So they're deceiving you. And that's why it, it's not free. If it was free, you would know it's from God. If I were to tell you about your calling because God told me and revealed it to me and he wanted me to share it with you, I wouldn't say, I know what your calling is and I can bring that out of you, but it's going to cost you $29.95 USD plus tax. I'm not going to do that. It comes from the Lord. It's freely given, freely received. These videos, yeah, I have ads that run that um, help financially because it's a ministry. I need to make a living. I'm not working uh, legally because I'm in Canada and I'm not a legal resident here. I have a spousal sponsorship going right now to make myself legal and get a work permit and all that. But I don't even want to stay here. I don't want to live in Canada. I want to move back to the U.S., um, Canada, I just, I don't care for. So to put it short, um, use this money, which I haven't even received yet to provide for my family because I'm a man, I'm a husband. I'm supposed to provide for my family and the man who doesn't provide doesn't eat. So that's my way of providing. I'm not taking advantage of people. I'm not trying to uh, make money for God's wisdom and, and knowledge. Not at all. It, it, I'm freely giving it, but just that financial source helps me. And if I have that option, why am I going to let it pass by and starve and struggle and, and things of that sort? I haven't even gotten a penny yet. So it's not like I'm getting rich. So it, it's nothing like that. But anyways, um, God will let you know and it will be free. The fact and the biggest red flag is that it costs money. If it costs money, run run away. Whether it's deliverance, whether it's trying to speak in tongues, whether it's them teaching you how to interpret tongues, whether it's them teaching you your calling, whether it's, uh, I can't say pastor because pastor school probably costs money, but those things that are gifts are actually deception. And they're seeking out those who are desperate, who are lonely, who are looking for purpose in life who are weak and vulnerable. And it's like an insecure person that a salesperson speaks to, they'll buy anything because they're hoping that it makes them happy, that it fills their void in life, that it makes them feel special, popular, whatever. So it's the same concept. They're looking for those suckers that are like, I need purpose in my life. And you all of a sudden click on YouTube and you hear this advertisement. Oh, you know, we have a workshop where we can teach you you're calling from the Lord. Just pay this amount and visit this place and stay here for a week or whatever. And then boom, you'll leave knowing you're calling. If it's from God, it's not going to cost you a penny. I'll tell you that much. Because God doesn't want people going into their callings, having to pay to find out what their calling is. God will reveal they're calling to him directly or to her directly. 
So you don't have to worry about that. So that's the biggest red flag is if it costs money, they're, they're vultures. They make merchandise out of you, just as the scripture said. In the end days, these wolves in sheep's clothing will come in ways of persuasion and, and like uh, convincing you and making you feel loved and special and this and that. The world all your life has been teaching you and conditioning you to be insecure, to be vulnerable, to feel empty, to feel lost, to be depressed, whatever. And they're coming to gather up what they've sown, basically. They've sown that into your life. And now they're coming as the savior to help you feel confident, to help you feel whole, to help you feel happy and have joy. So they basically made you that way. And then they're pretending to be the answer to your disease, if you will. So they're giving you the sickness and then they're coming as the cure. That's what's happening. It's not you had a sickness just randomly out of somewhere and they just happened to have a cure and they came to you to bless you with the cure. No, they gave you that sickness. They gave you that mindset. They gave you those emotions. And now they're coming to reap what they sowed into your life to take the harvest so we were warned that they will make merchandise of you and what that means is they will make money off you in any way possible you hear joyce myers just sow in this amount and god will bless you and it's like no that's that's not how the bible works you don't sow in this amount what it means to sow in is to do good deeds, to help the poor, to uh, feed those who are hungry, to visit those who are in the hospital, to um, clothe those who are naked or don't have clothes, to open doors for people, to have manners, so on and so forth, to do good deeds with nothing, no intention of receiving you're not doing it just to receive. You're doing it because you genuinely want to help that person. You want to be a blessing from the Lord to that to that person. You don't want an audience to thank you. You don't want a pat on the back. You don't want any kind of praise. That's the good deeds that you sow those in and blessings you will reap. Okay? Just like the opposite. If you sow in bad, I made a video about this. You sow in bad, then you reap bad. You reap curses over your life. If you scam people, hustle people, lie to people, cheat on people, um, disobedient to the Lord, uh, live in backsliding in sin, um, those things, um, taking more money than you're supposed to, stealing money from your parents, those things you're sowing in bad into your life. And it's like planting uh, a flower. It's going to bring death to what you planted. It's going to bring curses back against you because you, you reap what you sow. As scripture says, it's not karma. Karma is witchcraft. That's the devil's way of trying to get credit for good things and bad things happening. No, it's biblical. You reap what you sow. <laughs> okay, going back to the gifts. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. So it's telling you there's different gifts. There's diversity of gifts, but it comes from the same Spirit. So that person who tells you, I just blessed you with tongues, that has to come from the Holy Spirit. And if that comes from the Holy Spirit and you're born again, you already have the Holy Spirit. And if you're not born again, they can't make you saved through a gift. You have to be saved first, adopted. It's almost like being an heir of God. And when you're an heir of God, you get a nice mansion. You get a nice sports car. I'm not trying to get materials, but it's basically like you're a foster child and then a parent who is rich because God's kingdom, he, he's rich. Got all the riches in the kingdom and they're waiting for you, not here on this earth. So he becomes your parent now because he adopts you. And now you're the heir of God. And now he gives you things that only he can give that come from riches. So you have that because you're adopted. He's not going to give it to some stranger. He's going to give it to his children. So 
His children have their own mansion. His children have their own, you know, luxurious car. His children have this, have that. It's handed down to them because now they're part of the family. Yeah, that's not biblical, but I'm telling you, like, just think of that in, in concept. I guess some of that is biblical. You do have a mansion in heaven waiting for you if you're born again, but there is no like luxurious car. I'm just using that to get your idea of like the world and how God, um, how do I put it? I, I know you know what I'm talking about. The world and how God rewards you or, you know, uh, hands down something to you because now you're a child of his. So you're already going to have that. No one can gift you that if you're not a child of God. So that's like them saying, you're not saved. You don't have a relationship with the Lord. You don't know the Lord, but the Lord will give you a Lamborghini tomorrow or through this person, the Lord can bless you with a Lamborghini. That's not how it works. <laughs> you understand? Like God is not going to bless a devil, a child of the devil. If you're not saved, you're not a child of God. You're not adopted. You don't have the Holy Spirit of God. So you're not heir of God. Okay. So just like Michael Jordan's um, kids, two sons, daughter, I believe, maybe three sons. I can't remember. But... You know, um, Marcus, Jeffrey, and Jasmine, um, they're the heir of Jordan. So his legacy, his life, he can hand down to his kids. But is he going to do that to a stranger walking across the street? No, because you're not family. You're not the heir of Jordan. So scripture mentions we are the heir of God. But anyways... Let's go back to the scriptures. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And the same Lord. So it's not a different Lord, a different spirit. It's the same spirit and the same Lord that gives that spirit. And there are diversities of operators. <clears throat> And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. So back again to diversity of gifts, diversity of operations. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. It's not Buddha gave me this, Muhammad gave me this, um, Hindu goddess gave me this. No, it comes from Almighty God, Yahweh. Okay, that is it. It comes from Him or no one at all. If it comes from anybody else, it's counterfeit. So, back to... But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Given to every man to profit with all. So every man has the manifestation of the Spirit. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Word of wisdom. You have wisdom of God's word. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. You have, wisdom, you have knowledge of God's word. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Notice how they keep saying, by the same Spirit. That's the key factor here. It's not, oh, I got my gifts from the Holy Spirit. I got my gifts from my pastor at the church. And I got my gifts from this fortune teller over here. And I got my gifts from this book that told me to read this. And I got my gifts from this online service that told me to say this and do this. It's from the same spirit. Uh, to another faith, but I read that. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. That's discerning spirits, seeing the spirit world, having the spirit world revealed to you, 
that man's eyes cannot see, cannot comprehend wisdom, knowledge that is not there <clears throat> unless it is revealed to you by the Lord directly. Seeing spirits, smelling spirits, all of this. To another, faith by the same spirit. I already read that, sorry. Um, to another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. That's speaking with tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Now, that's two different gifts. Just because you can speak it doesn't mean you have the gift to interpret. You most likely don't. Because God made it so that way you cannot speak it unless there are two or three witnesses around you that in a, an interpreter. Something like that. Without having the scripture in front of my face, I can't say it word for word, but I know there's supposed to be an interpreter. And if there is no interpreter, you're only supposed to speak between you and God. If there is an interpreter, you can speak to those around you because that interpreter is making sure what you say is biblical. What you say comes from God. What you say is not demonic tongues. And what you say uh, has purpose. It's like an interpreter of a language. You know, if you're Spanish and you're around people that only speak English, then you need an interpreter that can speak English for you. It's edifying because now they can understand you because of your interpreter that speaks English to them, relays the message to them. So that's what the interpreter is. So the gift of tongues is kind of like a language that no one else knows, but you and God. And if he wants other people to know it and for you to do it around people, you have to have an interpreter that has that gift. It's a gift, a spiritual gift. You interpret that person's tongues. So as children of God, as the body of Christ, we want to find brothers and sisters in Christ and find out what their abilities are. What are your spiritual gifts? Because once you know that, you may be in addition to their gift. Maybe someone's living their whole life speaking in tongues, but they can only speak to God because they have no interpreter. They don't know anybody who is an interpreter. So they can't, God can't use them to speak to other people because they don't have an interpreter. So maybe if you try to go to church, try to go to places where God leads you, you pray about it. Hey, God, lead me to an interpreter. Hey, God, lead me, lead me to someone who speaks tongues so I can interpret for them. Whatever it may be, you use your gifts together and they're more powerful and they're more edifying. Okay, so <clears throat> people claim that you must speak in tongues in order to be saved. I'm saved. I don't speak in tongues. I had a dream that if I prayed for tongues, that God would have me speak in tongues because I was like in my dreams speaking tongues. I don't know if it was holy tongues or satanic tongues, but I was speaking tongues and then I had this desire to ask God and I asked and I prayed and it never came so I just let it go but um speaking in tongues is God's language and it's incredible like I've heard about it you just pray for hours and the Holy Spirit just takes over and just has a con conversation with God it's incredible um a lot of people these days are on their live Instagram live and YouTube live and they're speaking in tongues in front of their live audience and they don't have an interpreter and that is dead wrong and they're in biblical error and you need to call them out on that and you need to reprove them and rebuke them and you need to let them know what they're doing is wrong and they need to stop and you pull up scripture to convict them and if they're not convicted that tells you the devil's working through them those are uh, demonic tongues and their pride is greater than their obedience to God's word which you know God is not using the proud. He resists the proud, gives grace unto the humble. So you know God's not using them. So it's best to leave that chat. I've witnessed that before. I've called them out and they just, their pride took over. They, they thought they were this chosen special person with ability that other people don't have. And they felt like a celebrity and they're like speaking tongues and you don't know what they're saying and they could be cursing you and the devil could be using them to curse you and you think you're listening to, you know, uh, peaceful tongues from God. It's very dangerous. So anyways, um, to another interpretation of tongues, but all these worketh that one and self same spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. 
all of these. They make it very specifically known. The same spirit, the same spirit, the same spirit, the same spirit, the same spirit. They don't have to do that. It's kind of common sense. Like, hey, if this one is this, then we know it's talking about the spirit because it talked about it earlier. But no, God wants to make it set in stone in your head, known the same spirit. Cannot come from anywhere else. It comes from the same spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. Then at the end, they finish it off with, but all these worketh that one and the self same spirit. Dividing to every man, man, mankind, severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members and all the members of that one body being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body through our faith, not water baptism, faith baptism, repenting as a sinner, accepting Jesus on the cross, the death, burial, resurrection, spiritually crucifying yourself and having life in Christ and being adopted as God's child. All baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. Then it goes on about the body of Christ. You can read that yourself. Not needed for this video. So, you have to know those gifts. Those are the only gifts that you can have. Those are the only gifts that come from the Holy Spirit of God. Anything outside of that is the devil trying to influence you to play God yourself, to experience some kind of ability and power that God did not give you. So that way you are rebellious toward God and that way you are against Jesus. And that way you view yourself as your own God because of this power and ability that you have. And now he wants you to be in tune with it, to practice it, to harness it, whatever. And go out and use it and become addicted to it. And while you are using it, you are doing witchcraft. The Catholic Church teaches this through Catholic Mass. People think that's holy stuff, biblical stuff, godly stuff that they're learning at Catholic Mass. It is absolutely not. It is witchcraft that you're learning from that church. Because that church is not of God. That church is Satan's church in a false light. I'm sorry to tell you if this is the first time you're hearing it. Go and pray and ask God without a rosary in your hand, just your hands together, no object whatsoever, no Bible, nothing, and pray and ask God if that's the truth. And I promise you, he will reveal it is. So, they're teaching you how to become witches and warlocks without you even knowing it and claiming that it's what God wants. It's, it's what people did in the Bible. They twist scripture and turn it into a lie. Just like people who are lukewarm believers they haven't quite chosen to follow God yet. They have an inclination, uh, a desire, a passion, but they're still stuck in their flesh. They're still stuck and want to live for what they want to live. They don't want to be embarrassed by telling their friends that they follow Jesus now. So on and so forth. There's many reasons. So they're stuck. They think it's called riding the fence, but riding the fence doesn't exist. It's either you follow Jesus or you don't. If you do, then you follow Jesus. If you don't, then by default, you're following Satan. That's just how it is. Whether you want to follow Satan or not, whether you believe in Satan or not, you're by default following Satan. Because if you're against Christ, you're for Satan. If you're, if you're against Satan, then you've, you're for Christ. I mean, if you want to be. If you're against Satan, you don't believe in Satan, but you don't believe in Christ, then by default, you're with Satan. That's just how it is. There is no gray area. There is no riding the fence. It doesn't exist. So you have to understand, if you're lukewarm, that means you're like you're on Satan's side, trying to move toward God, but you're not pushing enough. You're not sacrificing enough. You're not wanting it enough. You're not giving it your all. So you're still with Satan. You're still under his bondage until you make that step, until you follow God's commandments. Until you give your life to Christ. All those things. Then you leave Satan's side. Satan's bondage. Adopted as God's child. Holy Spirit. New, renewed mind. Renewed heart. Heart of flesh. Not of stone. New creature in Christ. Fruits of the Holy Spirit. All of that is given to you. 
you become born again. There's no more, I don't know if I want to follow God. I'm embarrassed to follow God. You're not ashamed of the gospel when you're following Jesus. You're not telling people if they, oh, are you, are you religious? Yeah, I'm spiritual. Do you believe in God? I'm spiritual. You're saying I'm a follower of Christ. I'm a servant of the Lord. I'm a child of God. I'm born again. I'm a warrior for Christ. You're bold because now you're in a relationship. Whereas before you were an acquaintance, strangers. So you're uneasy, but you knew God was calling you to him. So you had this inclination again, like this, this desire, this craving, this passion, something eating at you in a good way, but you didn't want to, the devil didn't want to let you go yet. And you allowed him to keep you in bondage. So that's that position. But anyways, with powers, um, basically Adam and Eve were not supposed to eat that fruit. They were not supposed to know what it was like to become like God's knowing good and evil. And that's, <clears throat> that's what God was trying to prevent. God was trying to prevent that by forbidding them to eat of this fruit. He said, you can eat over here. I'm not saying you can't eat. You're supposed to starve and die. But you can have anything you want over here. But over here, you cannot. So it's like him saying, you can have this mansion for people of the world and people with the worldly mindset. You can have this mansion here, but this car in the garage, that's a classic whatever can't touch it can't drive it can't sit in it nothing now you think you're set like you, you got a mansion what do you need a car for but no see curiosity hits your mind of like i have all this and that's great and that's amazing and that's a blessing but i'm curious about this thing i can't have if he didn't say you can't have this <clears throat> then their focus would not be on that because they wouldn't know that exists. But because he said, but this you can't have, now their focus and the enemy in their head is making them curious of what they can't have. Why are they forbidden? Well, what's, what's the secret? What is something that I'm missing out on? What is something that I should know? What is something that could help me? And now they don't care about what's over here, whether it's a mansion or a whole island for themselves, they don't care. They want this little thing that is not even comparable to that because of curiosity, because of the unknown. And that's what the devil's doing, is he knows you're not in your Bible. Can't speak for everybody. He knows you're not in your Bible a lot because he tries to keep you out of your Bible. And by doing so, you lack knowledge. And when you lack knowledge, he tries to bring people in the name of Jesus but it's not biblical Jesus, it's false Messiah Jesus, false Christ, which will come in the end days as Jesus warned us about in the Bible. And he's bringing this Jesus, which comes from the Catholic Church, to make you believe that whoever this person comes in the name of Jesus, saying uh, they have a picture of Jesus, a, a candle of Jesus, crucifixion of Jesus. First of all, if you're, if you're Christian, Christ is not on the cross. Period. There's no debating that. There's no, oh, I'm worshiping him on the cross. No, we worship the death, the burial, the resurrection, which means he defeated the cross. They keep him on the cross because they're mad that he defeated the cross. They can't face the fact that he defeated the cross. They can't face the fact that he's the savior of the world. They can't face the fact that he's the lamb of God that forgives all sins that frees people from sin, that takes people out of Satan bondage. They can't face that fact. So they don't remove him from the cross. They keep him on the cross. It's kind of like a slap in the face. Like you never defeated the cross. Look at that. You're still there on the cross. They're lying to themselves to make themselves feel better. That's what that's about. So if you have a crucifixion on your, in your house, you're doing the same thing. Whether you're meaning to or not, that's what you're doing. Okay. If, if, um, let me think of an example here. One second. This might be a terrible example, but it's like, say one of your family members gets shot. Okay. You don't want a picture of that reenactment and post it up on your wall 
and say, this is a blessing from the Lord. I'm going to remember this moment forever. You have the aftermath. Maybe you have the bullet or maybe you have the wound that you can take a picture of that shows you defeated the bullet. So you're not wanting to, t to remember the murder like that. You're not wanting to remember him on the cross. You want to remember him on the cross only in the way that he gave his life for you and that you are so appreciative of that as a sinner. But you don't want to live that and have that on your mirror, in your car, or on the, the front, above your front door. That's not what you want at your church. You want off the cross. Okay? Even people worship the cross without Jesus on it. The cross is a, a symbol of salvation. But it's not to be worshipped. It's not to be used as a physical object of security, of safety, over your home, over your car, um, taking it into your school classroom to hopefully pass your grades. That's you putting faith into a physical object as a cross. That's witchcraft. You should not be doing that. If you want to look to the cross as thank you, Jesus, for all that you did for me and for everybody else in this world, through your faith in Christ, that's one thing. But to have the cross on your wall, not to be thankful for Jesus, but because you're using that cross as like, as long as this cross is in my room, I'm protected. As long as this cross is above my door, my front door, I'm protected. As long as I carry this cross around my neck, I'm protected. As long as I kiss this cross before I go for a drive, I'm protected. If you're doing that, you're cursing yourself through the cross of Jesus that actually remove curse. Can you believe that? That's how the devil works. He deceives you. He makes physical objects of things. And he has you put faith into that object. What does that sound like? It sounds like the golden calf. The golden calf that the Israelites created when they went against Moses, they went against God. Remember that? Yeah. So they created an object and then they put all their faith into it and looked at it as Lord. That's what you're doing when you're doing that with physical objects. God is spiritual. We worship him in spirit and in truth. That's biblical. So if he's spiritual, that means it's not physical. Spiritual is not physical. Spiritual is virtual reality. Spiritual is, is an example of virtual reality, is an example of um, uh, imagination. It's things that you can't see, that you have faith in, that exist, but you can't grab a hold of. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Physical is the physical world. You can you can see the phone. You can touch the phone. That's not spiritual. Spiritual would be as if the phone is not here physically and you're just believing there's a phone. It's maybe a terrible example, but I hope you get what I'm trying to say. So with that being said, we worship God spiritually. What does the Catholic Church do? The Catholic Church worships God. I have to do this because you're not worshiping biblical God. Worships God physically. What do witches do? In order for witches to use witchcraft, they have to use a physical object. Because it ha they have to have a housing, just like a candle has to have a housing for uh, it to be in for there to bring light. So you have a candle, you put it in this little housing, and then you, you light it, and it's good, and the wax falls, and it's safe, and blah, blah, blah. It's the same concept. Witches need housing for this spiritual power, this spiritual influence to house into so it can harness the power there, hold it, and whenever they want to use it, release it. That's what's happening. You can't do that if it's spiritual. If it's spiritual and that power is released, no object is used except your hand and your hand alone in the name of Jesus Christ. That's it. If you come from the Lord and you are blessing this person, you have the gift of healing and you want to heal this person, you will say, get up and walk in the name of Jesus. And they will do that. You're not going to say, wait right here. I'm going to go and get my first aid kit or I'm going to go and get my cane, my, my magical cane. And I need you to hold it. So, when we both hold on to it and I say, get up in Jesus' name, you'll, you'll be healed. That's not how it works. It is power from the Holy Spirit in you 
that transfers into that person's body. It is God's working miracle between his child and that person. Just like Jesus did. Jesus didn't go and bring objects with him and make sure you got this for when we raise the dead and make sure you got this for when we help the blind see and make sure, yeah, he spit on his hands, got mud, this, that. That's different. That's his way of making that person see because maybe that's the way you can. But he didn't get an object, like a physical object that you can hold and smash, like things like that. He just said, I forgive you and, and that's it. You're healed or get up and walk or carry your bed or um, uh, what was it the other ones I can't remember the top of my mind right now um, rise up whatever he said um, for Lazarus was it I can't remember so he raised the dead made the blind see leper walk all of that and even then, what did the Pharisees say he was doing? They thought that was witchcraft. They were claiming that Jesus was a prince of devils doing witchcraft through the Holy Spirit of God. They didn't know it was the Holy Spirit of God. They thought it was Beelzebub, prince of devils, whatever. So that is not at all what's happening. That's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And that is the unforgivable sin. So... Because they did not know Jesus, they did not know the Father was working through him. They did not know it was the Holy Spirit working these miracles. They did not know it was the kingdom of heaven doing these miracles. Even though they're nice miracles, going around helping people to see who couldn't see, helping people to walk who couldn't walk, you know, they're amazing miracles. This person's dead and now they're alive and living. You would think, okay, that's from God. But if you don't know God, you're not going to think that way. You know, relationship with God, you're not going to think that way. They didn't know Jesus to be the Messiah, so they had no faith in what he was doing. Those who knew Jesus and came to Jesus as servants to follow him and worship him, you're the Messiah, you're the Son of Man, you're Jesus, you're sent by God, we're thankful for you. They had faith. Anything he did, they knew it was from the kingdom of heaven because they had that knowledge given to them because they were drawn to the Son by the Father. But those who did not know the Son did not know the Father. And the Father was not drawing them to the Son. So instead they're being hypocritical, religious, zealous freaks. And the religious spirit was condemning Jesus. Was um, framing Jesus, um, persecuting Jesus, whatever you want to call it. Because they did not know that was Jesus. They just saw it as a regular person, me and you. Like, who is this man who claims to be Jesus, who clearly is not, is what they're thinking and saying, and going around forgiving sins? Only God can forgive sins. They knew that much. They, they even stated that. Man cannot forgive sins, but God only. They knew that because of the Bible, because of their religion. So it's sad that they knew that, but they didn't know that was God right in front of them. That's the sad part. You know your Bible in and out, just like the devil does. But you're not aware that you're speaking against God right now in this very moment with his own word. That's the sad part. That's when you know you're going to hell. Because that means you don't have a relationship with Jesus if you can't even identify him when he's right, right in front of your face. And now we're supposed to believe in Jesus spiritually without seeing him. Just like I said, how good is it um, that those who saw me, something like that, but blessed are they who, who believe and have not seen. Something along those lines. So Peter, you know, all of them, all the disciples, they got to physically see and walk with Jesus. But us, after he crucified himself on the cross for us, he's obviously on the right hand of the Father right now in heaven. So he's not here walking on earth for us to see and follow physically so now we believe spiritually and this isn't religious dumbing down conditioning spiritual belief that comes from religion from man 
of being like a Pharisee. Religion teaches you how to be a Pharisee. Follow the Bible. Do as it says. Works for salvation. Get God's approval. Be a good person. Do good deeds. <clears throat> Try to stay out of bad ways. Uh, just like try to stay away from doing bad things. That's what religion teaches you. And you follow that, you will be a Pharisee that will perish in the lake of fire for eternity. Now what Jesus teaches you is what is spiritual. Know that you're a sinner. Repent of being a sinner. Turn from your sin. Say, I no longer want to be a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. Jesus gave his life for me. I believe the death, burial, and resurrection. Father, thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for me. Please adopt me as your child. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. However you want to say it, go about it. Then after that, in order to follow Jesus, you have to follow his word. So that's when you go to the Bible and you start doing as it says. Now it's no longer works for salvation. It's works after salvation, which is edification of your salvation. Because now Christ is working in you as the vine, as scripture says, and we're the fruits. We must bear good fruit in order for it to be Christ as the vine. If it's not good fruit, then it's not Christ being the vine. And those fruits will rot in and the father will throw it into the furnace and they will burn. So that's your example there is the fact that they didn't even know who the Messiah was, but they claimed to live for him. They claim to say, oh, I tithe, I pray, this, that. But then he's right in front of your face and you don't even recognize him. So who are you praying to? Who are you tithing for? You know, like, you got to know the one that you're in a relationship with. So that, that's like you um, saying you're in a relationship with some girl and you're talking to her, this, that, you're growing over email, over text, whatever. And then when she crosses paths with you in public, you don't even recognize her. It's like, well, then what relationship are you in? You're in a virtual fantasy relationship. You don't even know who the person is. You know, so. Maybe not the best example, but I think you get where I'm coming from. So back to special abilities the devil wants you to again eat from the tree that you're forbidden not to eat from to become like gods and have these special abilities now we're servants of the lord as i said and as the bible says so being servants we go to god being employers we go employees we go to our employer we don't go above the employer. We can't. We're not in a position to. We don't use outside help to go above the employer. We can't. We're not in a position to. Um, we can't have outside help give us a position that's different from what our employer gave us. They can't. They're not in a position to. And this is what happens spiritually is the devil uses people that are not in a position to give you something that you are not in a position to receive and that they're not in a position to give. But they deceive you to believe that they come from God and they give you this and that you're able to accept it and you're in the position to do so when you're not and then you accept it and now they've deceived you from being obedient to God to now being rebellious against God but you're not realizing you're rebellious because you're thinking they're chosen of God who God sent to you. So now you're in this constant rebellion against God, doing witchcraft, your own abilities become your own God, opening your chakra, uh, doing tarot card readings, whatever it may be. And you're thinking it's all from God because this person has a picture of Jesus. They have a crucifixion of him in, in their house. They, they say they love Jesus. They even say his name. They're not speaking of biblical Jesus. Ask them what Jesus they're talking about. Test their spirit. See if they have fruits of the Holy Spirit. That's how you'll know they are coming from God. See if what they say comes to pass. See, this has happened to me. Where I was living with a witch as a, a roommate. And she had witch friends. And I didn't know this. She was Catholic. I didn't even know what Catholic was at that point. 
even though my mom was Catholic, raised Catholic, but died Christian, born again, praise God. Um, she never told me anything about Catholic religion. I never asked. I never cared about it. My wife, she was Catholic, now born again, praise God. But I never looked into it. So she was Catholic, didn't raise a red flag to me. I was just like, okay, that's, that's your religion. That's your belief. Cool. But until I went to the actual physical Catholic church for the first time in my life and being born again in that moment, I had the most uncomfortable feeling I've ever had in my entire life. Like going down a, a black alley with no lights is nothing compared to what I felt in this church. I felt like it was a house of demonic spirits and people could not see them, but they were hovering around and they're able to hover around because those physical objects, those statues that you give them, they house inside of. And even when you go to the store and you buy those objects, you know, it's not from church and it's from a store, they do witchcraft in the back and then they put those out for sale. Okay. So they house inside them. So that housing gives them a place to roam and then go back to. See, in the physical world, they'll just roam. They won't be able to land. It's like a plane that can just fly because they don't have a landing. So if there is no landing for them to land, all they can do is fly and stay in the air. So these spiritual influences, these demonic beings, just hover. So you need to give them something physical for them to land like a plane to land. And if they have their landing, they can stay in that environment because they hover and then they go back to landing. So if you have one of these statues in your house as a Catholic follower, believer, whatever, church goer, you're giving a landing zone for a demonic spirit to be in your house. You basically giving legal right to the kingdom of darkness as your roommate, without having to pay rent, but instead bring havoc into your home. And they put you in the deception of this will keep you safe. Again, we're going to go back to God is spiritual. We worship him in spirit and in truth. That's what scripture says. I didn't make that up. It's in spirit and in truth. It's spiritual faith through the Holy Spirit of God. The truth, the Holy Spirit is truth. There's no lie in him. So it's through faith through the Holy Spirit. Now, this physical object, you've already gone against God because the Bible says to destroy such things, such statues made of stone and wood and, um, what was it? I can't think off the top of my head. It was like made of gold, made of something. I can't remember, but there's scripture that says they have hands, they can't touch, they have eyes, but they can't see, they have noses, but they can't smell, mouths, but they can't speak. And people worship them. People look look up to them. He doesn't mean, like, yes, some people do this, but he doesn't mean just worship, like, bow down, worship, like, praise you. Worship can also mean you put faith in it. Uh, as long as this is in my home, at my front door, or outside my house, I'm safe. I'm protected. Because this angel, Archangel Michael statue, is protecting me. Your faith is supposed to be in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Not Archangel Michael, not Mary, not no saints, okay? None of that. It's supposed to be Jesus. It's supposed to be biblical, period. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So if you own such statues, paintings, little dolls, get rid of them immediately. Don't sell them because then you pass the curse on to someone else. Don't donate them because of the same reason. Destroy them and then trash them. Don't just trash them because then someone could go digging through the trash and now you've cursed that person's life. Destroy them. Burn them. Smash them. Make sure their housing is destroyed so they can no longer house there. Because if you throw it in the trash, their housing is now that trash bin. And they will somehow lead spiritual influence around that neighborhood and lead someone to go pick them out of the trash and take them home. You don't want that. You want to destroy their housing. It's just like if you were trying to get a roommate who was an intruder and wouldn't leave, you move out. 
but they still live in your house. So you have another house, you don't care. So in order to get them out of your house, what do you have to do? You have to destroy your house. Because if you destroy your house, then they have nowhere to live. But as long as your house is standing, they can stay as long as they want. So it's the same concept that it's a housing situation for them. And once you destroy it and break it, that's it. It's an open door. Now they have to hover and leave. They have no residence there. So it is very dangerous for you to trust in these objects, put faith in these objects, worship these objects. It doesn't matter if you bow down to them. It doesn't matter if you have a conversation with them. It doesn't matter if you trust in them. It's all the same. It is all the same. You're worshiping a false God. You're worshiping an image and making it your God. You're worshiping an image and making it your protection, your safety. And that's the deception that the Catholic Church uses to get demonic spirits into your home. They have them at the church already there for you because that's they have them there housing, housing big, huge statues, taller than us. And they're there because... That's a Catholic church. That's a church of Satan in a false light. So they're little ministers of righteousness. They're priests, their father, whatever you want to call it. They're stupid schooling. It's all condition based. It's all spiritual manipulation. Why do you think you constantly hear about stories of rape with confession and this and that? Because they find you vulnerable. They find your weakness. They know all about you. Just like Santa Claus claims to know if you're good or bad. Satan studies you. He knows if you're good or bad. He influences you to be bad. He doesn't want you to be good because good leads you to God and obedience to God and so on and so forth. And good only comes through Christ alone. No man can be good without God. So that's all biblical. So you have to understand the reason that those things occur in the church is because it is demonically influenced. And if it's demonically influenced, how is that so? Because there's presence there that are greater than you, you're not saved by Jesus if you're in a Catholic church, okay? Because when I went to the Catholic church, it was not in service. There were people just like in a little group in the pews. And this is the first time I've ever seen pews like this. And I was like, oh, this is so weird. I've seen in the movies, obviously, because they always love to promote the Catholic church, more conditioning to get you to think that that's the church to go to. to the, if you're a bad person and they convict you enough that you'll go to a Catholic church like these people on the movie or in the TV show, that's the wrong church to go to. The church to go to is the body of Christ, which is God's word. That's the church to go to. But anyways, so they deceive you. They mislead you. They know what they're doing at that church. They know what they're doing. And... You don't know what they're doing. But I promise you, you pray to God about this without any physical objects in your hand. And you ask him to reveal this truth to you about these physical objects, to convict you about any objects in your house, to make you have a disgust toward them, a hatred toward them, not want anything to do with them. And if he wants them removed, that in the name of Jesus, they will be gone. That he breaks them. He has them fall down, fall over. Whatever kind of sign you need, proof that you need, you ask for. Because only you know what is good enough for you to believe after that. You know, if the wind is going strong and it blows over, you're going to be like, oh God, that wasn't you, that was the wind. So whatever sign you need that's like, oh, that was God. He answered my question. He answered my prayer. So these are going to go. Then you ask God that. And I promise you, I promise you on my life, if you remove these things from your house, you will have a different environment completely a peaceful light feeling environment you won't feel this heavy fear like walking around on eggshells situation in your home there won't be constant fighting and arguing and division in your home okay the reason that is is because you have that graven image there whether it's buddha whether it's a hindu goddess whether it's the Catholic, Christian, angels and saints and whatever, fake Jesus, those images are destroying your relationship with God. They are intervening with your relationship with God because those images are a spiritual hindrance over your growth and truth. If you have demonic influences roaming in your house, 
You really think you're going to have biblical truth? You really think you're going to have clarity? You think they just come to like eat your food and leave? Like, hey, we just come to eat and then we're going to go back to our housing situation. No, they've come to wreak havoc, to bring torment, sleep uh, paralysis. You know, if you have those statues, little dolls, whatever, in your home, and then you wonder why one day you're molested in your sleep and you can't move and there's a heavy weight on your chest and you can't move at all, you can't speak because it keeps you from speaking, well, you're allowing that influence in your home. You have no one to blame but yourself. Get rid of it. I can't say that's the only reason, but that's a big reason and for sure a reason. So there's that, you know, if there's constant fighting with your family. I know this firsthand. My mom had a graven image. She didn't know um, her boyfriend at the time, who was a very evil man, uh, a very deceiving man, a liar, cheater, everything um, that you possibly think of. I don't want to get into it personally, but he gifted her this goddess-like image that was made out of like uh, stone, cement, I don't know. And I was sleeping in the room that it was in and I didn't even know because I just moved from Utah back into my mom's house because my, my back gave out, so on and so forth, and couldn't work. So I went home to recover and I stayed in this room. And I felt like this huge, huge hindrance over me. Yes, God is greater. God is above. If, if you're born again, this hindrance is only just like a, a prick, maybe. Like a bully tapping you like this compared to someone who's not born again. Then it's a bully like punching you. So if you're not born again, you're already under Satan's bondage. So you're already in this fear-based mindset, cave-like control. But if you are born again, you have freedom, but it's a hindrance of like an annoyance, like someone like tapping on your glass, like, and you're like, stop, like it's really annoying. That's what it's like. You still have control, but it's just an annoyance. It's a hindrance. So you're still strong spiritually, but it, it weakens you because it's a spiritual influence of darkness, of toxicness, of evilness, wickedness, whatever. So I started to feel this. I couldn't point my finger on what it was. Then we decided to sell the house. And that's when it comes to cleaning all the rooms, taking everything out of drawers and stuff. And I came across it. And I was like, Mom, what's this? I knew immediately it was not of God. And oh, that's a gift that, you know, Dennis gave me. And I was like, Mom, this is demonic. Can I smash this? And she said, yeah. Go ahead. I had the most fun in my life doing this. I took it outside and I smashed it on the ground. I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. When that object was in the house, there was such a hostility in the home. There was constant arguing, constant depression, constant fighting between each other. Um, a loneliness feeling, uh, a hopeless feeling of like no purpose of life. There's just all this darkness and toxicness and then when we would leave and go out to eat we'd be happy we'd have joy we'd be laughing we'd be getting along we wouldn't have that weight on our shoulders everything would be different so that tells you that the source of the problem the root of the problem is at the home it's not the people because if it was the people then it wouldn't matter if we went out to eat it wouldn't matter if we went to this concert it wouldn't matter if we went to this event we would still be the same people because we are the problem of the people but because it happened only at a specific place, like we even go to my sister's house and it wouldn't be there either. So if it happened at a specific place, that tells you that that place, there's a deep rooted problem. And when I got rid of that thing and I smashed it, all of a sudden we stopped fighting. We stopped arguing. There was no more division. There was no heaviness. It, it felt like a peace that we've been always seeking and wanting and we kept questioning, like, why is this house so evil? Why is there so much drama here? Why do I hate living here and being here? And when I'm out, I'm happy. And then when I got rid of that statue, that all went away. But unfortunately, it was at the wrong time because now we're selling the house and someone else gets the house. It's at the right time for the right for the next people. They got a house that was spiritually cleaned. But other than that, we didn't get to enjoy it the way that we wanted to. 
So I promise you, get rid of those statues. Denounce those in the name of Jesus. Ask God for forgiveness for putting your faith and trust in those statues, in those images, in those dolls that you bought from the store that someone gifted you or that your church pastor or servant gave you, uh, assistant, whatever. And denounce it all in the name of Jesus. And say, I believe in you, Lord, and you alone. I put my faith in you alone. Same thing with the example I told you guys in the past that I had a cross around my neck, not with a crucifixion, not Jesus on it. And I kissed it before I drove my motorcycle. Never had fear in my life on my motorcycle. I lane split in California all the time, going fast, didn't fear anything. Loved it. I love speed. And this one day, just for some reason, I'm, this is why I was living with that witch. I was feeling this heaviness of like fear ahead. And I was like, why? Like I've never felt this before. So I was influenced through that fear, which fear does not come from God, it comes from the devil. So he planted fear in me to lead me to trust in the cross around my neck for safety. I looked at it as Jesus, you know, this is the cross that Jesus was on. So I'm going to kiss it. And it's like me trusting in Jesus. False. It's me putting my faith that was supposed to be in Christ alone into a physical object in Jesus name. And that day. I rode my motorcycle. I had fear on the highway. There's bumper to bumper traffic. The enemy staged this from the very beginning, set me up emotionally for it to work in his favor. And a voice said, keep going straight. You'll be fine. That was the Holy Spirit. I didn't know at the time. Then another voice said, get off the next exit on the right because it's too dangerous. I'm already in emotion of the devil. So I'm not going to listen to the Holy Spirit because he's already got me an emotion that works in his favor of, yeah, getting off an exit sounds about right with how I'm feeling right now. Holy Spirit telling me I'll be safe, go straight. That takes faith above the emotions that I'm already feeling from the enemy. So at that point, I was not strong enough spiritually to trust the voice that says, go straight, you'll be fine. So I gave in to the lie, which I thought was God protecting me. You know, get off the exit and you'll be safe. The minute I get off the exit, I take the first right. Accident happens. I'm not to blame, but an accident happened. It was supposed to kill me. I hit the windscreen of my bike. My chest hit it. I couldn't breathe. My back completely destroyed. Um, the car tires, the tires of the car, the Mercedes, Drove over both my legs. I should have been in a wheelchair or I should have been dead. Neither happened because even though I went against God, even though I was sinful in the way of trusting in man's object created by the hands of man, trusting in a physical object for my safety, trusting in the emotion that I was feeling, even though he was still there, he did not forsake me. I, he was still there, said, go straight, you'll be fine. Even after I kissed the cross, even after I went against him, not purposely. I didn't say, hi, God, I'm going to kiss this cross. I would forget you. I'm trusting in the cross, not you. I didn't know what I was doing. I was being deceived. And he knew that. And he knew the enemy was playing games with me. So he was there to warn me. I rejected the warning. Just like he's there to convict us. You either believe it and trust in it and you stop what you're about to do or you stop what you were going to do and you trust in the conviction or you ignore it. And you'd be rebellious. But he is still there to protect you because you're his child. So just like if, if a child storms out of the house because of a parent being mad, they're not going to be like, oh, well, you're on your own out in the world. If you get murdered, if you get kidnapped, uh, that's up to you. No, they, they still care about your safety. They're not happy that you went against them. They're not happy that you rebelled, you're disobedient, disrespectful. But they still care about you as their child. They love you. They want the best for you. And that's safety. So... He warned, I ignored, went on the devil's voice, trying to play God in my head, rebuke you Satan in the name of Jesus. Accident happens, I'm not at fault. Lesson learned, a woman came, saw that across around my neck, prayed over me immediately. I felt volts come from her body into mine and immediately I was able to breathe. The very minute she did that. At first, I was out of it, couldn't breathe, couldn't like catch a breath. Felt like I was going to die. And God sent her, my guardian, to put her hand 
on me. I think it's my arm. I can't remember. Yeah, it was my arm. It was my cross. She prayed. And then I felt volts come through her body into mine. And then immediately I was like brought back to life. Like, you know how they do that? Clear! Like, clear! And then they bring it back to life. That's what it was like. But it happened spiritually. So um, I didn't have any broken bones, even though the car tires drove over both my legs. God protect me from that. God protected me from losing in the accident because they tried to claim that it was my fault. Um, the officer, which was sent by Satan, tried to claim that it was my fault because it was a 57 skid mark with my bike because I locked up the brakes and both wheels just skid and I fell off the bike and skid with the bike, almost like a action scene of like sliding on the ground with the bike. And then I hit my head against the passenger side door. So with that, I just, I learned my lesson. And after that, my necklace was broken. I couldn't put it back on. And after that, I said, I'm not putting a cross on me ever again. And I'm not trusting in man-made objects for my faith. And I know other people who have done that as well. They've put like a cross around their mirror on their car and they look at it before their drive or they pray to it before their drive or they just trust in it. Just faith is all is needed to give it power. And, and you trust in it and it's not going to keep you safe. It's the devil deceiving you to think that you're now safe because you trust in it, you prayed to it, you have it hanging, whatever. But that's a curse waiting to happen. Whether it happens the very day, whether it happens a week from now, whether it happens a year from now, it's a wild card that you're giving the devil to use against you because you gave legal right by trusting in man-made object instead of trusting spiritually in faith. So I've heard of someone doing that and then getting in an accident and again, they didn't die but they learn their lesson. That's, that's the Lord revealing to you, like what you did was wrong. And this is your punishment. You gave legal right to the enemy to get in your emotions. You gave legal right to the enemy to bring torment, to bring this accident because you trusted in him. Basically you trust in his objects. So he's a deceiver, master deceiver. We know that that's biblical. So that's it guys. Um, video is pretty long. I don't want to make it any longer than it is. So the only special abilities you have as a child of God come from God. They don't come from men. I can't go over to you and say, I gift you with the gift of tongues. I gift you with prophecy. I gift you with this. These wolves in sheep's clothing will do that because they know you don't know the Bible and they know you'll just believe them as telling the truth because they're on a platform that reveals them as like a chosen of God. But you got to think, what is TV used for? What is movies used for? Satan's agenda, not God's. So if they're on a platform and they're a known celebrity, they have a check mark by their name, that tells you right there, red flag. The fact that they have mega churches, that tells you right there, red flag. Jesus had 12 disciples. He didn't have a mega church. He went walking all over with his disciples, telling the good news, showing miracles, pointing back to the Father and his works. He didn't have a mega church. He didn't come as a chosen. He came on a donkey. He didn't come in a limousine. He didn't come in a chariot with men holding him up. I think that's what it's called, a chariot. If, if I'm mistaken, you know, correct me in the comment section below. He didn't come as this holy one. Like he, he didn't come with the, uh, the status of I'm a celebrity for God. No, because it's not about him. It's about the father. So it's not about look at me, what I can do for you, what I'm doing now. It's look at my father because he sent me to do these things to reveal to you who I am because he's calling you to me. That's what it was about. So I hope you guys understand. Do not trust others. That claim that they can give you spiritual gifts. And if others do claim that, pray. Say, God, this is making me really happy that this person says I have a calling from you. That I have, you know, this anointing is what people love to say. Oh, you're, you're anointed, man. You're so anointed. Oh, look at this anointed. Stop putting people on, pedof on pedophiles. On pedestals. Okay, it's not about us. 
It's about Jesus. That's why Jesus said, deny yourselves. You're supposed to deny the praise. Deny exactly like he did. They were praising him. He fed them with fish, fishes and bread. And then they're like, oh, we're going to follow you, worship you. And it was too much. And he, he went away. He's denying because the praise is not for him. Praise is for the Father. He's coming to do the Father's work, which is to die on the cross for all mankind because the Father's love for mankind, to send his only begotten Son to die for our sins. It was never about Jesus when he was here. It was about the Father and his work, and he made that known constantly. So that's what we're supposed to do. It's not about us. It's not about Michael. It's not about Jessica. It's not about uh, Brad. It's not about Mark. It's, it's not about any of you. It's about Jesus. If you're not pointing them to Jesus, then you need to humble yourself. You need to ask God to humble you over the pride that you have over yourself because of uh, a void that needs to be filled that's empty that the, the devil is using to fill because of your pride of seeking of acceptance and praise from people. And he's using that weakness of yours to uh, deceivingly fill your void by having you do things in Jesus' name, but you're not doing them biblically and you're not doing them through obedience. You're doing them for your own self gain, your own self value, worth, whatever you want to call it, praise, audience, following, subscribers, and that is dead wrong. You need to repent and ask God for forgiveness and start directing people to Jesus, as I always do. People always say, thank you for this video. This is so true. God bless you. I say, don't thank me. Thank God. That's how you avoid any kind of praise is you don't let the praise be accepted. You run from it. You avoid it. You redirect it to God instead of accepting it. Just like that king, I forget his name. Um, he was so proud. And because of that, he was going his own way against God. And then the prophet came and told him, God has chosen a new king because you went against him. You're filled with pride. Resist the proud, gives grace unto the humble. So he has filled with pride. People were looking up to him, worshiping him, praising him, and he loved that. That's why Jesus says, you must deny yourself to follow me. You can't have an audience of an entrepreneur, uh, not entrepreneur, um, what's it called? Like a group of people that follow you, I forget what it's called. Anyways, you can't have an audience of paparazzi following you when you're following Jesus because the focus needs to be Jesus, not you in the spotlight. So you need to deny and say, paparazzi, go away. This is not about me. You need to deny that group of people that want to follow you. No, it's not about me. I'm following Jesus. We're focusing on Jesus. Spotlight's on Jesus. That's it. So any abilities that people claim, especially to give you with money involved, run away and expose those people. Anyone that comes with the name prophet so-and-so, run away and expose that person. Because that title is their ego being built. It's them feeling special and making it known to people. Oh, I'm prophet so-and-so. Okay, I've known of my calling and I've never used the name prophet. I've spoken of it and God has revealed it to me. But I've never went around saying I'm Prophet Michael or changed my username, Prophet Michael, nothing like that. Holy Spirit Messenger is the same thing, but that's about God. That's not about me. That's his calling for my life is to be a messenger for him. To give you guys the good news, to give you guys wisdom and knowledge of God's word. Because those are the gifts that I have. Discerning of spirits to teach you of the spirit realm. Wisdom and knowledge of that. Because that's what God reveals to me. As you can see, my videos aren't scripted. I don't have a piece of paper. I'm not reading from anything. I'm not memorizing anything. It's just God in the moment telling me what he wants me to share with you. That's it. There's nothing more to it than that. And I'm not saying that to be above anybody or think I'm special, holier than thou, whatever you want to call it. It's not about me. I don't care about that. As long as it's edification, edification for you and it helps you come away from sin and repent you know, come away from disobedience and, and be obedient, come away from lacking knowledge and have knowledge. That's all I care about. That's what I'm here for. It's not about me. Never was, never will be. It's all about Jesus. God bless you guys. Have a blessed day.